What's up guys, Justin here with the realtimeessentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to import Blender files quickly into Unreal Engine. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in order to import Blender files into Unreal Engine, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we're set up with the Blender add-ons for Unreal Engine. There's a blog post, which I will link to in the notes down below that kind of walks you through this. And so the first thing that's kind of tricky about this is you need to make sure that you actually download the add-ons themselves. So there's actually two add-ons in here. We're going to focus on the first one. There's a send to Unreal add-on. There's also an Unreal Engine to Rigify add-on, which we can look at, but we're not going to worry too much about in this video. We want to focus today on getting our Blender models into Unreal Engine. So the first thing you need to understand is there is a link in here to GitHub, um, which will link you to the add-on, but you need to make sure that you log into your Epic Games account and connect it to your GitHub account before you do this. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It's going to give you an error message that looks something like this, which is really frustrating, by the way. So first thing you need to do is you need to log into your Epic Games account. So you can go up to the upper right hand corner of the page, click on the button for sign in. Once you're logged in, you want to go up into your account, go into the personal section, and you want to go down to connections. And so within connections, there's an option in here for accounts, and you want to go down to the option for GitHub and click on the option for connect account. When you do that, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to connect to your GitHub account. So then we're gonna click on link account. It's gonna ask you for authorization. You're gonna to wanna to click on the button for authorize Epic Games. And you do wanna make sure that you've actually logged into a GitHub account as well. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna connect this. And then you can go over into GitHub on that link. All right, so then what's going to happen is you're going to get an email that says Epic Games has enjoy or Epic Team Admin has invited you to join the Epic Games um, organization. You can click on the Join button, and that's going to give you access. You can also go to the Epic Games GitHub page, and uh, there should be an invite at the top of the page that you can click on to accept as well. But once you do that, that's going to give you access to the actual Blender tools itself. So now we finally got into the folder where we can access the Blender tools add-on. All right, so then you want to go down and download the newest zip file. So you just want to click on the download button right here. And we want send to Unreal right here. So we're going to click on this and we want to download the zip file. So we're going to click on the zip file and we're going to download that. All right, so remember, since this is a zip file, we can just go to our edit preferences in Blender and we can install this as an add-on. So we're going to go into our assets file. We're going to find that zip file and we're going to install it. Notice how now we get this option in here for pipeline send to Unreal. So basically what it says is that's going to send that to Unreal Engine. And so we're just gonna check the box to enable this. And we're not gonna worry too much about the preferences right now. Let's jump over into Unreal Engine real quick. Okay, so a couple steps that you need to follow um, just to make sure that everything is, is enabled the way that it should be. So you need to make sure you go into your plugins and you want to make sure that you've enabled Python editor script plugin right here. Make sure that is enabled. And you also want to make sure editor scripting utilities is enabled. Those were enabled by default for me, but you need to make sure those are enabled so this is going to work. And then once you've done that, you also need to go into your project settings and you need to scroll down into the plugin section under Python right here, make sure you've checked the box for enable remote execution. So you, you shouldn't, so once you do this, it's already set up, so it sounds complicated, but it's really not. Just make sure this box is checked. Well, once you're done with that and you have an Unreal Engine level open, then you can go back into Blender and create a file or create an object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a Shift A and we'll just add a, we'll go ahead and add a Suzanne right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and rename that test zero one but notice how once you enable the add-on there's an option up here for pipeline which is going to allow you to export things to unreal engine now the problem right now is if you're to do a pipeline export send to unreal this isn't going to work the reason why is because it's only going to export things that are in these folders right here or these collections that were created when you enabled the add-on so what we need to do is for example we want to export the test zero one mesh to Unreal Engine. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that into the mesh folder right here. So one other thing we wanna do before we do this is let's add a simple material to this. So I'm just gonna go into my shader editor. We'll just add like a blue material to the Suzanne right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a subdivision surface modifier to this as well, just to make it smoother. We're gonna apply that and we're gonna call it good. So now if we take our test 01, which is inside of our mesh folder and we do a pipeline export send to Unreal, what that's gonna do is that's gonna send this object to Unreal Engine. And so if I go over into Unreal Engine, notice how it tells me there's no smoothing group information. I'm not gonna worry about that. But notice how now if I look inside of my content folder, it created an untitled category, untitled asset folder. Notice how my test01 model is in here, which is my uh, monkey mesh, my Suzanne mesh. And then it also created a material right here, which it's applied to this object. So you can see how bringing that into Unreal Engine is really easy. All right, so one thing I will note about this that I cannot figure out, maybe one of you knows, um, if I was to re-export this, so if I have to change this material and re-export it like this, so if I was to do a pipeline, export, send to Unreal, it doesn't actually change anything in this file right here. So even if I was to right click on this and do a re-import of this asset right here, it won't re-import the asset with a new material. And I'm not really 100% sure why. So if I right click on this, for example, and I go to open source location, I can see how, and I had to redo this, but I can see how there's a new FBX that's created in here with that new material, but I can't get it to reload inside of Unreal Engine. And I can't delete it out either. So if I delete this and then try to delete out the file, it tells me that there's a memory reference to it. So for right now, I cannot figure out how to get this to update with new materials later on. I just cannot sort that out. So since I haven't been able to figure out how to um, get these changes to update in Unreal Engine, what I've been doing instead is I just duplicate my object for right now. So um, I would just call this something like test03. And then I'll just export it again. So I'll just do a pipeline send to Unreal, and then it comes into the folder with the new materials. So if anyone has a better way of doing that, feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know. This is still incredibly helpful to me, but it is a little bit clunky getting your changes over to Unreal Engine. And so let's say that we wanted to export a different kind of object. So let's say we wanted to create a cube, and let's say we wanted to create like a stone wall or something like that. So we'll export it this way. We'll scale it on the Z axis. And we'll go ahead and jump over to the shader editor and we'll create a quick material. So I'm just gonna create a principled BSDF material. And we'll just create a quick material that's UV mapped in here. And we'll go ahead and export this object. So we're just gonna call it brick wall. We'll go ahead and drag that into our meshes folder, take our test03 back out of our meshes folder, and I'm gonna go ahead and export that to Unreal Engine. So for whatever reason, this should work. So it should come into Unreal Engine with the materials applied to it. So if you look at this right here, it's going to have the materials applied to it with the normal maps and everything else. So that should work. Some materials don't work though. So for example, if I was to do this again with a new wall, so we'll call it, Brick wall 001 is fine. And so let's say I was to apply a wood material, and this is one of the wood materials that came out of the uh, asset browser or the uh, asset diorama from the Blender asset browser tutorial. Whoops, I applied that to the wrong wall. But if I was to export this brick wall right here, so do a pipeline, export, send to Unreal, and this is a different wall, but this one with the wood texture, for whatever reason, when I bring that one in, so my second wall, the material doesn't work. So I'm not 100% sure what drives materials working or not working, but you might try, if you export a material and it doesn't work, you might just try a different material. So I think there may be some more advanced functions inside of the material that was set up by Blender here. So there's some more complex stuff in here for sure. Um, so just be aware that your simpler PBR materials will probably work. Make sure that you UV map them, but some of your more complex materials, you may have to try something else. That's just gonna be kind of a trial and error process for you. And so one thing, one other thing that I do want to note when you're exporting this is when you go to your pipeline and you do an export, there's an advanced dialog that you're going to want to go into. Make sure that you check the option for use object origin. If you don't use the object origin, what it's going to do is it's going to export your object using the world 
origin. So let's say for example that I was to take this diamond, drag it into the mesh settings right here, and then import it without having that option checked. So if I don't have use object origin checked, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay in here. If I don't have that checked, then my object origin is gonna be way over here, right? Cause it's gonna use the, the world origin as the origin for your object. So now if I jump over into Unreal Engine and I drag that diamond in, notice how the actual diamond itself is gonna be like way off of the actual origin itself. So in order to fix that, just make sure when you export your objects, make sure that you have gone into your pipeline, um, export advanced, make sure that you've checked the option for use object origin. That's gonna make your life a lot easier inside of Unreal Engine. All right, so I know that seems a little bit complicated. Once you get it set up, it actually works pretty good. The one thing I haven't been able to figure out is that re-importing of materials. So if you guys have any tips on that, leave them in the comments down below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.